Previously on the Belladonna Watch Club. It ended so happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was so lovely. And they've got kind of like a Cheshire Cat type of vibe going on. Like, he's the man on the roof. Are they naked or are they just Siamese twins? I think it's just Siamese twins. Oh no, tits. Yeah. <laughs> a little boot with a camera bag, just like a out the door. <laughs> so we get to Chilton. And Rory tries to give Madeline her notes that she asked for. And then Louise and Paris and, and Madeline, they're icing her out again. Louise starts calling her Mary, which like she never really did from the beginning. It was the guys. So mm -hmm. that was weird. And Rory's like, what is happening? Like, why are we doing this again? But like Virgin Mary, like, what are you talking about? And then Louise says, Typhoid Mary. Did you do know about typhoid, Barry? Because I did not. I'd heard the term, probably from here. Yes, but I think what I know is like a false story or like a, you know, made up something or other. Tell me, you've done your research. Okay, so typhoid fever was going around New York in I think it was the early 1900s. People were getting really, really sick and dying from this fever. And there is this woman, she was Irish, I believe. She was a cook. And she had like the viral markers for typhoid and none of the symptoms. She was asymptomatic, but uh -huh. had the, the virus, the disease. So she would go work in all these houses as a cook and they would eat her food and they would be around her. And the people in the houses where she was working started dying. They were trying to figure out like where this typhoid was coming from because it's usually from close contact, other people, and they were looking at the people and their social circles and they couldn't figure it out because it wasn't necessarily spreading. Nobody else was sick. Like they just couldn't figure it out. And then the police started making a connection with this cook in the kitchen and they were trying to tell her like, you are spreading this. You cannot do this. You cannot work in these like public places where you're getting people sick, especially like food handling for these people mm -hmm. but that was you know like she was a trades person she was a, yeah. in service like that's all she knew yep. that was the only skill she had and so i'm not sick it's not me i'm not like leaving a trail of bodies in her <laughs> um and so they did a test on her stool and it had typhoid in it and so they actually put her into a forced quarantine where she was like not allowed to interact with like other people basically. And I don't know how she got out. Either they like let her out or like she snuck out or whatever, like changed her name, started working in all these kitchens again. And then ah. all these other people started dying mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and she did it again. And then she still is like, it's not me. It's not me. I'm not doing this. And I'm not getting people sick. And she was just like completely out to lunch when it came to that. And uh, was once again, put into like a forced quarantine and I didn't write down all my information, but if I'm not mistaken, she was in a forest quarantine for like 30 years total between all of the stints. And so there's a huge question around like ethics when it comes oh, totally. to her and she's mm -hmm. used as a case study because it's like, do we let her go about her business and everybody dies? Or mm -hmm. do like, how do we contain this when this person is getting other people sick? But she wasn't the only person who was asymptomatic, and but she's the only one that got that treatment. So other right. people were also spreading this, but I don't know if it was like a class issue or... Okay, probably, yeah. Right? Oh, and yeah. so that is um, our poor Typhoid Mary situation. And it sucks because it's like, it's not her fault that she has no. this virus, and mm -hmm. and but it is her fault for continuing to spread it mm -hmm. knowingly. But public understanding of like public understanding of okay. medicine and viruses and mm -hmm. bacteria and everything was nil like exactly. and even doctors couldn't agree on that's it how a virus was spread conflicting yeah. like you know expert accounts of like what was actually happening and so obviously she could hire a doctor that would say like this is absolutely bogus and this isn't happening mm -hmm. at all and it's 1900 mm -hmm. like what are you gonna do <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so and a, a woman a woman who I was not married and was only working in service her whole life without that what is she doing exactly Especially she around that time work. what kind of she needs to eat. what kind of work would she get into who knows so, that's yeah. it
So it's a really dicey uh, kind of mm-hmm. case study to to go through and to, to work, especially, you know, like ethics classes and, and stuff like that mm. and law and medicine and, and a ruthless insult from Louise, yes. if you understand oh, yeah. what's going on there. And so then Rory finds out that they think that Tristan is taking Rory to the PJ Harvey concert. And then she says, like, I'm not going. I never was. <laughs> Paris is like, I'm over Tristan, so don't back out on my account. It's like, girl, you, are, you are not over Tristan. Otherwise, this would not be happening. This whole scene at the school was, like, I want to melt my face off I infuriating. Mm-hmm. Like, just, like, I, I wrote, I know why, but then also, why just why would they blindly believe him like right? that? Believe her? What, without, without what has she done? Kind of question. Yeah, well, just like no questioning him. Whatever. Um, like he thinks or he knows that he can like go about spread lies and like and get away with it unscathed, right? Um, but this fucking girl versus girl, yeah, bullshit is mm-hmm. awful, but so real, so real because. Because, yeah, why would the boy make something up? Why would the boy, te- like, spread a rumor or, mm-hmm. you know, tell a lie? What 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 position does that put him in? Why would he do that? No, I'm much more willing to believe that this girl, who is my competition in exactly. every way, mm-hmm. of course, she's the one who's, you know, manipulated it all and making it all happen. Just, why does that happen? Why does that still happen? How do we, how do we get out of this horrible, horrible teenage, not just teenage, young adult, adulthood, women, everything, mm-hmm. competitiveness, but uh, mm-hmm. it's just, it's one of those ongoing things for sure. It's but awful. The whole s- yeah. Melt my face off. <laughs> and, and then she takes it a step further because we find out that Paris has become the editor of the student paper next year. Yeah. And so then this is the like classic, like politics, wealth, abuse mm-hmm. of power, abuse of position, like for your own personal gain and vendetta, because she says mm-hmm. that, you know, oh, I'm going to assign Madeline the music column. Wouldn't that be great? But uh, how do you feel about covering the parking lot next year? And then Mm -hmm. it's like, why would you take somebody who doesn't know what they're doing and put them just to slight somebody else? That Mm -hmm. is like so typically political and it's just like, it's disgusting. It makes my skin The cutting off and the shutting out of any future advancement or anything like just, it's vile because it just comes from this ugly place of, Com- competition and yeah. ego, insecurity like, and ego yeah, yeah. Ah. and yeah putting somebody incompetent into a position that requires knowledge and and introspection and skill just to further your own personal agenda mm-hmm. like not going to yeah. benefit at your readership to have somebody who yeah. doesn't know the music talking about exactly music, you know and you think that paris would have a little more investment into the final product of whatever her newspaper is going to be like but no no she's just not thinking about that right and then the way that they like stand on the stairs the like intimidating like have a good summer like (laughs) is that is that heather's i feel like that's heather's i think so i think so yeah Yeah. (laughs) it also felt a little bit like the craft (laughs) yeah Mm. which is more my speed (laughs) i watched that movie when i was like 11 it was so scary Mm-hmm. so scary the main the, the main terrifying. scary girl like invoking Manon oh my god mm-hmm. thing of nightmares such a good movie mm-hmm. yeah so after this little scene Luke is knocking on the door at Lorelai's house Lorelai's getting ready for a date she thinks it's gonna be Max and she's like you said you'd be late like <laughs> you can't be right on time and then she opens the door and it's Luke and Luke mm-hmm. is there to get his toolbox. And Lorelai makes a little quip about how, you know, they're so used to having it. And they call it Bert. And then <laughs> when they leave the house, they're like, bye, Bert. And, you know, they're talking to it. And then he casually just drops in, like, so Rachel left last night. And Lorelai's like, oh, no. What That's happened? not where she was expecting that to go. Yeah. No. And she's like, what happened? And he's like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. She just, she just left. And she's like, well, no, something must have happened. Like, why did did she give you a reason? Like, why did she leave? And I think he's actually about to tell her. Mm -hmm. And then Max comes in. Mm -hmm. 
then Max is like, oh, it's the guy from the di- or from the town hall that she was feeding and he's in her house. Okay. Hi, I'm Max. Um, and you are, and it's so very awkward. It's uh, instant rivalry. Instant. instant. There's not, there's no seconds of like, wait, who's this guy? It's boom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like they can smell each other. They can smell oh, yes. the competition. <laughs> uh-huh. And so it starts, Luke actually is the one that kicks it off. Cause I think Max is being, is ready to be perfectly pleasant. Yes. And Luke antagonizes him from like the very start because he says, I'm here to get my toolbox, which I left here because I'm here um, fixing things at the house. Mm-hmm. Like, and so he immediately just tries to get under Max's skin, tries to be territorial and possessive of a woman that he has very, very blatantly been trying to like not date. Mm -hmm. Like he wants to date, but now all of a sudden he's like, oh, I'm going to, I think it's because like he came over with an agenda to like try to. Yes. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like, where has this loop been? this whole yeah. season like <laughs> and all of those thoughts are on Lorelai's face Lorelai's face is amazing I love her here she's just like <laughs> I'm not even sure how to describe her face but it's just, because she's she is between the two colossus you know like uh-huh. they're both both of them they they're sizing each other up they're at their you know tallest height back and forth back and forth nose to nose near enough and <laughs> she's right in the middle like what is going on here <laughs> and he's like i'll talk to you later and max is like not tonight or lorelei's like i didn't mean tonight and so it's like tomorrow morning and max is like not too early because we're gonna be busy tonight like it's just so cringy and awkward <laughs> and lorelei's yeah. just there like trying not to laugh and she's <laughs> yes, like, it's true. processing and she's like oh okay all right what is this what is this? Because mm-hmm. it's kind of like a side of them that she hasn't seen, I think, from either of them. Mm-hmm. And she's just like, hmm. hmm. But I also think she kind of loves it. Oh, absolutely. Oh, what's I have name? a clip. I have a clip. I couldn't. I couldn't. Because Lorelai's final response to this is everything. So I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Same time as always. <laughs> I'd count on a little later. Doesn't matter what time it is. I'll always be around. <laughs> Her face. Bye. She's like, uh, look. <laughs> mm-hmm. So are we going? Uh, yeah. Just want to make sure you two are finished swinging those things around. Someone's bound to lose an eye. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I love yes. that she called him out on this, like, macho display. Mm-hmm. Yes. This is where her commentary is very, very welcome and very much needed. Like, yeah. she has a comment for everything, but here... Yes, we needed it. She was not going to let that slide or fly. Uh-uh. No. <laughs> and she thinks it's funny. So she says yes. it because she thinks it's amusing. Max True. is not amused because also understandably, like, I mean, it's sort of expecting to just meet this townsperson that you're already a little wary of. And then all of a sudden he's reminding you, like shoving down your throat, the presence he has in your girlfriend's life. Mm-hmm. So kind of get it. You went a little hard there, Luke. (laughs) But then Max in his jealousy doesn't let it go. And even the way that he approaches it, like he says, I don't mean to be blunt, but is that over? He doesn't even like allow her the opportunity to explain if it even was something. And I don't, Mm -hmm. I didn't like that. Like, because he could have just said, oh, is there a history there? Like, Mm -hmm. that's a much more, that's a softer approach, you know? Yeah. Instead of, is that over? Implying that she has been actively sleeping with him, I, which mm-hmm. I don't, I did not it's like this, his approach. It's the return of this assumptive speaking. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And they start fighting and he, you know, tells her, he's like, well, well, it would make perfect sense if we weren't together for a while. And, you know, it makes sense that you were seeing other people. And so like, is that over? Like still, again, like still assuming that while they were apart, she was with Luke specifically mm-hmm. they start talking about how they did sleep with other people in a get down soul tree kind of way or <laughs> <laughs> her lie goes into like specific specifics which is also not necessary Lorelai. no you don't no. need to tell him that you slept with rory's dad on the balcony of your parents house like <laughs> you could just say that there were other people leave mm-hmm. it at that because if this is somebody you're going to spend a lot of time with eventually he will meet rory's dad like mm-hmm. let's not 
bring that into it. And so they're arguing and then they're like, why do we always let it get to this point? Like where things are good and then we let something weird happen. But like, that's just relationships, first of all. Mm -hmm. So I think I know, I think I know why she does state exactly who it was that she got down Soul Train style with. Because there really, there there was nobody else at all who that happened with. And so uh, on Max's side, it's some mysterious Thursday afternoon girl, perhaps, you know, it could be (laughs) some, some anybody. And Lorelai speaks so much and says so much and shares so much of what's on her mind, what's in her thoughts. She is, she puts herself, she is putting herself right up front, giving it all, putting it all out there in front. And it's, hey, there was one guy. This is who he was. You know everything now. Give it back. Yeah. You know? Or like, or don't give it back. But at least I can say I've been fully and entirely honest with you. And she's doing her protecting yeah. thing. That's it. Because then she could be like, it was just him. It wasn't Luke. That's it. Like, let's mm-hmm. move on. Let's move on. And then they say, like, we're getting into this rhythm. And Max is like, well, I know what we need to do. And Lorelai rightfully says, break up. And Max mm-hmm. says, get married. What is with the what? men in her life just saying, let's stop all the fighting and get married and that'll be the solution. Christopher and Max in one season yeah. have had this solution mm-hmm. of getting married being the answer. Um, no. What What Mm-mm. did you do? <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure I face planted into a pillow. <laughs> and I screeching halt WTF Max is my big letters on on my page from here. Um, what? And immediately I try thinking of like, okay, why? How did he jump to that? How did he get there? And well, I think he moves, as we will see a bit later. He moves in big, sweeping book hero gestures and movements, not like Luke's sort of. I'm always going to be around, like an everyday participant in her mm-hmm. life. Max is. The big grand hero who comes in and wins at the end of the at the end of the novel, right? Um, and I I can't remember exactly what the lines are here, but I I quoted um, bickering match mm. versus fight versus argument, and I I think they have some kind of like a semantics sort of thing in in this scene where like what are we doing? Are we fighting? Are we arguing? Are we having a bickering match? Um, and We had that kind of a thing. Is it a fight or is it an argument in the previous episode with Rory um, running away to the Gilmore's house, the, Mm. her grandparents' house. Um, And Rory says it was an argument. Lorelai says it was a fight or vice versa. Something, the things got crossed there. And I, I, I haven't dug in completely into this thought. I haven't fleshed this out yet, but um, there's definitely something in like what words people choose to describe something like that like it's it's we've we've had an argument okay everyone has arguments we had a fight okay fights can cause breakups maybe it was a bickering match okay well that's jovial that's fun that's yeah it's it's lighter it's like quips about loading the dishwasher it's not like yes big it's it's minimizing yeah um and so on that in the previous episode Rory and Lorelai had seemingly, I think anyway, very different takes on what happened between them before Rory ran off. And again, here, they are having very different takes on what is happening in their scene right now. Um, so much so that their conclusions were drastically different. Yeah, I, I what the fuck, Max? Wow. <laughs> right? Oh, my God. Yeah. So thank God for Lorelai's own romantic sensibilities because she's Mm -hmm. like, no, you can't just, you didn't just propose to me. Like it needs to have plan and forethought and it needs to have like a thousand yellow daisies and you on a horse and like all of this stuff. And you need to have like things to say and it can't just be about ending a bickering match. Max is like, okay, you're right. Sorry. Like, you're right. And then they just somehow like reset the night, which I would not be able yeah. to do. I would be like, I am canceling this date because I have things that I need to sort out in my head. Like I cannot just like <laughs> sit across the table from you because I would just want to like 
keep having the conversation. Right. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to just like stop, but they're like, ding dong, ha, you're five minutes late now. And then they like go off on the date. Yeah. It never yeah. happened. I could not do that. I think I would, I would like to be able to do that. I don't think I could do that after that kind of a, right. <laughs> a climax. That would um, further yeah. make me want to break up with him. Yeah. Like, no, oh, you've okay. got this all just wrong. Haven't you solidified the fact that I don't want to be with you. Okay. Yeah. And I, you mentioned, um, yeah. Lorelai's own, uh, her own sense of romantic, romanticism and romantic picture. Um, she's reading the rom-coms where he's reading the like knight in shining armor, classical romantic novels from centuries ago. Yeah. Those are their words. She says it needs to be planned, magical music and lighting, a subtle build up to the popping of the question. It needs to have candles <laughs> and a thousand yellow daisies and a horse. And I don't know what the horse is doing there unless you're on it, but maybe that's like overkill, you know? That's a rom-com. That's a movie. That's a rom-com. That's, yeah. 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 And so, yeah, I would have broken up with him after that. I would be like, if that's what you think the answer is, what happens when we're actually married? Mm-hmm. Then what's the answer? Mm Because we're not solving anything in this argument because you're still going to feel jealous and you're still going to, like, we're still going to run into these communication issues. So, Mm -hmm. ah. So they go on their date. And then we come back to the school where Tristan is being insufferable. Now he's getting angry with Rory about her rejecting him about the tickets. He's like, I'm getting tired of this game that you're playing with me. And she's like, what game? I'm not playing a game. You are. I'm not going. Take somebody else. I didn't ask you to buy these tickets. And like, at this point, what does he think he's going to accomplish by like getting angry with her? This is it. What is he expecting? What is he actually expecting her to just go, okay, well, you've worn me down. So, and I'd love to see playing hard to get. Right? Like he has not listened to a single word she said. No, Not he's one. going to be a Not terrible one. husband and partner to whoever he ends up oh. with, Tristan Dugre. But he's, <laughs> you know, modeling the behavior that he has witnessed his whole life. I guess so, yeah. Uh, men, powerful men getting their way, come hell yeah. or high water, and facing zero opposition and not knowing how to handle opposition and not believing that the opposition is genuine. Because how could mm-hmm. it possibly be? He's Tristan Dugre. <laughs> Everybody wants to go out with him. So... Yeah. Then he's like out of options, essentially. Like he just doesn't know what mm. to do and reverts back to like the most primitive third grade schoolboy BS and takes her books. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I'm not giving these back to you until you say that you're going with me. And she's like, keep the books. Fine. Keep I the books. Care. I loved her there. <laughs> I loved that. Yeah. Just Yeah. Leave it all behind. Just but I'm out of here. She's I'm like, this is crazy. And like, this is abuse at this point. She rounds the corner with Tristan holding her books and Dean is there. And Dean sees her with Tristan and is pissed and humiliated and ashamed. And like, imagine that feeling, the gut punch. Like, <sighs> like I'll be honest, I missed him. And so I did have a small cheer when Dean shows up because we haven't seen, well, we haven't seen him much and we haven't seen any action from his side to to you know put anything back together or talk or or anything it, uh, good signs are good but it he ruins he ruins it he ruins it for himself but we'll get there yeah but i'll be honest i missed him <laughs> and he has that fury face like thunder is <laughs> in here just as soon as he sees uh-huh. who's right behind her who's got her books yeah Incredible. he is smoldering and mm. I like I just put myself in his shoes. Like mm. he went all the way to her school, which is like a, mm-hmm. a weird flex, but I guess it's like a grand gesture, you know, like he drove yeah. out to Chilton to see her instead of just like seeing her in town. Okay. He put himself in the surroundings of people who have mocked him already in the past, yeah. who have belittled him and yeah. Yeah. He's there yeah. with in his his regular outfit and his little truck. You know, um, all these things that are all the indicators of him and his background and his personality, all the things that they've poo-pooed before. Yeah. Yeah. And Rory runs out and it's like, Dean, what are you doing here? He's like, never mind. This is a mistake. I'm leaving. And then she's like, no, 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 no. What are you doing here? And I actually don't like Rory in this scene. 
mm-hmm. for the first bit because she's making Dean do all the work now. Like, she's like, why did you come? And like, what's going on? He's like, well, I thought you were trying to talk to me. And instead of her being like, I was trying to talk to you. Mm-hmm. She's like, wait, what? And he's like, well, you came to my house. What are you talking about? And then like the stuff yeah. in the town meeting. And she's like, what are you talking about? Like, don't do that, Rory. He came all the way out to the school. And now he's hurt and he's scared and he's embarrassed and vulnerable. Like, give him what you've been trying to do. Like, yeah. give lay him off the-, the the coy and the oh, I don't know what's going on. You know what's going on. Yeah. Let him have the floor. Let him. Yeah, yeah. So I wrote again. What did Dean go there for? Um, what was he expecting? Because he he says that he went there because he thought Rory wanted to talk to him, but he she's not giving anything. But he's also not like encouraging her to talk. So she's playing stupid and he's cutting himself off before he can even get started. So if, yeah. if he went there and was like, I thought you wanted to talk, but he, he, he turns around, he turns it st- around almost straight away. And she's like, you yeah. know what? Forget it. I shouldn't have come here. I shouldn't have done this. Yeah. Like, no, 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 no. How about she's with Tristan? And so he like panics yeah. and it like yeah. is painful because now suddenly he thinks, he's got it wrong and that she's actually moved on and sure true but she's also saying i hate him he stole my books like can you not just believe her for a second and like how about you both go and sit in the truck and have like a some like a private moment or something how about you both just go let each other talk for god's sake they never do and it drives me nuts yeah and so dean is like whatever i'm leaving (laughs) And she's like, no, don't go or something like that. She's like, no, don't leave. And he's like, why? And he's like, because I love you, you idiot. And then that is the miracle cure for all of the awkwardness. And they just run to each other in big smoochies, smoochies. And Tristan. It's, it's what he wanted to hear. It yeah. it was the it was the response, so the, the words that he needed to hear. She knew that and he knew that. So he has this turn, this little pause. And then it's your big romance of running to each other, grand smooch. And the song that starts playing is PJ Harvey. <laughs> oh, excellent. Good, good. <laughs> Just thought I'd point that out. Um, and yeah, and then Tristan. We see Tristan in the background. Go ahead. Seething. Yeah. Seething. Good. good. Seething. The camera really seems to want to make us feel sorry for Tristan. Yes, it does. It really, because it lingers on him. Oh, you see how upset he is. Yeah, and I was sitting there. I had my arms crossed already, just like, no, no, stop showing me him. Go away, go away. I don't want to look at this guy. He 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 doesn't drop the books, but he lets them down onto the onto the ground. But I'm like, I don't want to see him anymore. Why are we focusing on this? Move, move. I don't care. <laughs> but I'm assuming we're gonna see uh a, at least you know one or two more scenes of him in the next season, maybe. I don't know. I don't know because I I see that as send off. instead of necessary like us kind of like wanting to feel bad for him like we do feel bad for him because whatever like he is actually interested in her and it would suck to see the person that you're interested in kissing another person sure but I think because last time he saw the two together he started a fight with Dean and so yeah. I think it lingered on him so much to show the audience that he wasn't going to intervene again and was like True. accepting defeat like he didn't throw the books he put them down gently to be like yep okay i'm done with this Mm. like Mm. she's made her choice and now i'm finally believing her because i see her kissing another guy not because she said it a million times but (laughs) yeah i think that they showed him as it being like a what's tristan gonna do is he gonna get mad is he gonna fight is he gonna say but you're coming with me to pj harvey rory like you know like he could have continued the lie and continued the like force like like aggressive courting (laughs) 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 yeah Uh, you're probably right but i just i cannot feel any kind of anything for him at all no terrible i just wanted him off my screen (laughs) And then, so they're having their nice little smoochy smoochy. Lorelai gets this like frantic call from Michelle at the inn. And I have this clip, not for the daisies, but for Michelle's dialogue throughout the entire thing. Everything <laughs> Michelle has to say is magic in this episode. Okay. It's so good. 
Let's do it. Here as quickly as I could. Hi, Kurt. Do not address me as a scoundrel. I'm just doing my job. What's going on? Am I or am I not the head man in charge of floral deliveries? Yes, and one of the few men I know who would probably declare that fact. I'm just doing my job. Stop saying that. Uh, this has to do with flowers we ordered? Flowers we did not order. I'm just doing my job. Say that one more time and I'm going to punch your nose. It must be a mistake. There's no mistake. I did not order these flowers. It says that you have to be here to personally accept them. But I have to be here? <laughs> well, that's... I am headman in charge of flowers. I just do what I'm told. I want you to stop saying that. That's not what I was saying before. It's a little variation that will still lead to a punch on the nose. <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> the way he says, punch on the nose. I'm going to punch your nose. I'm going to punch you on the nose. Not just like, I'm going to I'm gonna hit you. It's very mm -hmm. specific. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Punch on the yep. nose. He's planned it out. Like, oh, my bah. God. I just picked a, like a little pop. <laughs> I like that, again, we have uh, another scene of Lorelai in the middle between two men who are nose to nose and having some kind of a, you know, pe not peacocking, but, you know, some kind of a confrontation, basically. And she's right in the middle having all these realizations and her face is exquisite. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's about her again, regardless. Yeah. Because like, it's about her yeah. flowers that people are confused about. So she walks in and there are, according to the script, a thousand yellow daisies, but way more than a thousand yellow daisies because mm -hmm. if you put a thousand yellow daisies together in a room like it's not it's nothing it's like the, it's, a little... it's a table like <laughs> so yeah. it's all, way more than a thousand yellow daisies but a thousand or... yellow daisy bouquets maybe exactly yep yeah and so Lorelai is like oh my god Max is serious about the proposal this is it. it's the proposal and then she calls him and okay I got the gesture with the flowers but he's still not there. He's still not telling her how he feels. There's no buildup. There's no conversation. There's no, mm -hmm. like, he needs to walk out from behind the flowers and, like, okay. do the talking. Not just waiting for her to call him when she gets there. And it still is lacking on, like, so many levels from what mm -hmm. she said that she wanted. It is literally him calling a flower shop with a credit card. Like, no, Max, I'm mm -hmm. not impressed. I'm not. Lorelai seems to be impressed. But Lorelai probably has seasonal allergies and her brain is... <laughs> <laughs> well, I, she's impressed because she's overwhelmed. Yeah. You know, it is. It's a big romantic gesture that she had written out on paper. But then, you know, she sits there for a couple of minutes and kind of realizes... A, uh, well, maybe not realizes, but she just sits there for a few minutes and it's like, okay, so it's me and a thousand yellow daisies. That's what we've come to. This is this is the this is the scenario that I asked for, maybe. Yeah. And she seems oh, pleased. Yeah. She's she seems very pleased and overwhelmed and is just like, whoa, like this is he meant it. This is real. Like this is okay. And so she calls him and then, you know, he's like, I love you, Lorelai Gilmore. And like he says all of that stuff. And he's like, I meant it. I do want to be with you. Blah 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 blah. Still don't think that's a phone conversation. <laughs> nope. Does he say something like, but on your terms? Or something? Yeah, like like he gives her time to think about it and process and all yeah. of that. Like so he's like, yeah. I meant it. So like you you tell me when you're ready. Like it's up to you. Yeah. When, yeah. I think something well, something about this phone call being that like she starts talking and he just says, No, let me speak. So he actually manages to get her to shush. <laughs> which is rare, but I think she is speechless in this moment. Um, and he gets his moment that heroes in romantic, old, like the classic old romantic novels would get, that they would either get an opportunity to make a speech or to send a really important letter and like explain their position, their thoughts, which is great. But that's not the Gilmore Girls world. That's not the Stars Hollow world. It doesn't work like that, you know? He is so very much living his classic romantic hero mode, and he, he really thinks he's got it all worked out. And Yeah. And, like, whew, I don't know if it was – I mean, I'm sure it was everybody, but, like, he looked so out of place at the town meeting. Like, it just – he didn't fit. It felt awkward. <laughs> <laughs> like, it just it was not, not right at all. After this, Lorelai, like, bursts into Luke's – and it's like Rory is she here and she just like is so excited and wants to tell her and she's like well I have to I have to see Rory and she's supposed to meet at seven and Luke is like calm down like what's going on are you good and she's like I'm really good I'm just I think it's, it's good news I'm like I just have to tell Rory first I have to talk to Rory 
Meanwhile, Kirk is sitting there and like, <laughs> look at spilled coffee. And Kirk is like, I'm damp. <laughs> start to finish oh (laughs) and so luke is like okay so you're happy about this news and she's like yeah i think so Mm -hmm. and then she gets her page and rory is outside and then they just run to each other and i have Mm -hmm. the clip here a little bit of it but i don't know if it's gonna actually pass copyright because of the music because it's not a lot of talking it's just a song so we'll see i'm gonna play it I had to. I mean, it's like, it's such a sweet scene and they're just so excited. Mm -hmm. And this is where they feel more like sisters, like cool friends. Yes. Like, yeah, absolutely. Um, When Lorelai is in Luke's, uh, in just in the scene before she heads out and meets Rory, um, she hands him a daisy. Mm hmm. And she says, the whole town gets one today. So what could be a cute little, here, I'm giving you a flower, like a little romantic gesture. No, no, the whole town gets one. So Luke, in a sense, gets demoted to just townsperson. Yeah. Townie. I think. At least that's how that's, that's what it came across for me. Um, and just to wrap up the, uh, the, the musician storyline, they find a way, uh, our original troubadour himself, he's he's strumming away, singing his little song, whatever. Mm-hmm. And Mr. Beardy, Beardy? Does he have a beard? I think he's yes. got a beard. Mr. Long, long White Hair Beardy Man, um, who's on his way out, he, he quietly, without words, makes some peace with him. I think he whistles along a little bit. He does not have his guitar out, so he's not a true, true, true troubadour. Um, <laughs> and he just does a little bit of percussive back up on uh, on his guitar case and uh, there's a nice little moment of ah oh, okay they can be friends but he's probably on his way out this is a nice little tie up of their uh, conflict <laughs> yes um going back to the everybody gets one today mm. that would that line would make sense if she came in with an armful of daisies and was like handing them out to everybody you know true but i yeah. feel like she she didn't even give one to rory she no, like had one flower and put yeah. it in to Luke, which yeah. feels weird. Mm. Um, we'll get more of the flowers in the next episode, um, mm. but it 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 is an intentional slight against Luke. She's like, ah. this is not like from her, from the writers, ah. mm-hmm. because Luke is the only one who got a flower. Luke is in the love triangle with her. She got proposed mm. to with those flowers. Like, Lorelai, mm. don't give him the flower. Like, mm. give it to literally mm. anybody else. But, like, she wants to share all her happy moments with him. She wants him to be yeah. along for the ride with her. But this is something that's going to hurt him. But she doesn't mm. so, like, she doesn't see past the end of her nose when it comes to this kind of no. stuff. Like, she wants to include him in her joy, but it's not, no, it's no good. <laughs> And that is the end of Gilmore Girls season one. We did it. We did it. We did it. Wow. <gasps> oh, oh my gosh. We've been, oh, we've been every shade of, of emotion, I think. Every shade of emotion through this season. I am invested. And I, I want to see where my characters go. Um I'm still I'm 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 not in the 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 Lorelei fan club. I don't I like I I'm not there yet. I don't know if I will be. But I don't I'm know not if like you a will yeah, be. I'm, I, yeah, I feel like I might not be. I think it's a it's a it's a type of person who like gets the real you know it's a, it's a different type of person. But also, just my my style of person. Hmm. The later seasons, she does settle down quite a bit. I don't think season two is it. Maybe not season three, <laughs> but she gets there. She okay. makes her mistakes along the way. Sure. But I think in <laughs> my, my theory in terms of your characters and likability, like right yeah. now, Lorelai is here. Maybe Rory is here. And then in sure. the bar graph, they're going to cross. 
and go <laughs> in opposite ah directions. yes I, I it's it's really really hard to avoid uh spoilers and mm-hmm. I've, I think I have avoided like specific spoilers but overall I have an understanding that rural rural I wow yes precisely <laughs> yeah you know <laughs> <laughs> that she kind of, she just she just goes off in a totally un not unsavory but like an un, unwanted direction and it just mm-hmm. a, yeah she 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 loses people's favor um yeah. at some point in time but but the show as a whole has so many parts to it that I love and I absolutely get the like the addictiveness and the like the the vibes the you know the the yeah. the charm, the aesthetic, the feel of it, the quirks, the 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 different characters, and the 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 world being in yeah. Stars Hollow. I get it. I really, really do. And this is a place I want to return to. So mm-hmm. I'm, yeah, I'm 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 very happy that we finally come to the end of this season, though. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> to wrap mission. up some of these. Yeah. Well, and we started this back in October. Mm-hmm. We started recording back in October. I think our launch date was November, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been at this for a while and we, uh, I don't know, I guess I just want to take like 30 seconds here to to talk about that, that like the between you and I, we've sure. come such a long way. Yeah. Um, and, and we like, we knew there would be evolution and like comfortability and there'd be like bumps and things in the, in the road, but we could not have planned for any of these bumps that came along. Nope. Um, but yeah, I think what, what started as just a little suggestion from you, like in September of last year or something has, has turned into August. even. Yeah. Season. It was like summer. I think. August. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm just, I'm, I gotta say, I'm really, really proud of us. Um, I'm very, very, very proud of us. I've, I myself have learned a hell of a lot <laughs> when it comes to, <laughs> tech and editing and uh, summarizing and analysis and all that kind of thing. It's been absolutely wonderful. And obviously this is not like the final, but you know, it feels like a finale kind of thing. I'm I'm just so, so glad and grateful that we've accumulated this kind of a, we've we've grown this kind of a, 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 a subscriber base and a follower base and friends who, who are, joining in this with us and revisiting this with us and um uh, like I didn't know I didn't know how it was going to turn out or what was going to uh what, what was going to come of it but I'm really really glad that we've stuck to it and I'm just so proud of us so and thank you all for being thank you here. all like this is great um <laughs> I've had a lot of ups and downs with the show personally just from a, a personal life experiences like two kids in daycare obviously every episode starts with we've all been sick so Mm -hmm. uh, you know has has posed some challenges for me in this with like sometimes wanting to continue bringing myself to do it when you know all you want to do is like put the kids to bed and fall asleep um (laughs) that being said my favorite absolute favorite thing to have come out of this is the like chronicling of our friendship having us together in these videos and and being able to talk and having these like this documentation of Mm -hmm. of us is so special to me and I'm I'm gonna get emotional so (laughs) so even even when it's been hard Mm -hmm. I'm always so happy when I like I hear us talking when I hear our clips, when I listen to our episodes, like, cause I do every time a new episode comes out, I listen to it. And then like, I find myself laughing along at us and like, Me too. <laughs> like doing it all over again yeah. because it's just, it's just us having our mm-hmm. conversation. Right. And, mm-hmm. and that if, if, even if we stop this, like this is our very last episode, it's not, but even if it was, <laughs> I, I would just be so happy to have this, like, this this documentation this backlog of of content that is is us and I, I love it completely agree yeah 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 as I mean you all know just how long these episodes are um and it's a long slog to get through um 
editing them down and and all the things I do and it's it's tough because it's not something I'm I've been very good at it's all been a learning curve but every single episode um I'm laughing out loud while I'm editing and revisiting them and like they just, it's it's uh, yeah getting to experience it all over again and and just reminding myself of why we're doing this and and how much fun it is and and I think that's where yeah. we have a bit of that divide because I'm not involved in the editing process at all mm-hmm. and so for me you know when I have literally two hours to myself every day <laughs> like mm-hmm. that it's like okay so I have to watch the episode I have to take notes I have to get the clips I'm gonna maybe make a reel this week and then suddenly it's like, it's a lot, right? And I don't have those reminders of like why we're doing this throughout the week while it's busy and while it's crazy. But then we get together and we do this and I'm like, I love this. Like what? But it's just so hard to like yeah. pull myself out of the weeds to like absolutely have that clarity, you know? But then, yeah. and then I hear us and I'm like, this is why. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, anyway. I'm thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you all so much for joining us. This has been amazing. Uh, we do plan on doing season two. Um, yes. But perhaps not immediately because I need a tiny bit of a palate cleanser. And there's some stuff that Jenny wants to show me, which is yeah. delightful. <laughs> I'm pumped. I'm ready. I'm here for it. So uh, keep an eye out for that. The time has come. <laughs> yes. Uh, but we uh, love our Gilmore Girls fans and we love the reaction that we're getting and obviously Jenny is saying here that like she wants more so yep um oh yeah stay tuned for that and let's let's see what's up next (laughs) yeah yeah well I better do the outro let's see if I can finally do it properly for once as always thank you so much for joining us leave us a like if you like leave us a comment we love hearing from you um let us know how you've been feeling about the whole season as a whole. Do subscribe if you haven't already. We're on YouTube, on Spotify, and wherever you stream your podcasts. If you're just joining us now, we have an entire season of Gilmore Girls backlog that you can watch through. So please join yep. us. And we have other we have movies. We've done Twilight. That's right. And we've done some Christmas yep. movies. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, if you're here on YouTube, then we have a live reaction series where we are live reacting to Shit's Creek, which I've never seen before. Lisa is a huge fan of, and it's always a cackling good time. I just edited one earlier, uh, earlier this week, and I just, I I had tears in my eyes. So anyway, (laughs) all that being said, until next time, she's been Lisa, I've been Jenny, we have been the Belladonna Watch Club, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.